Today we're going to talk about troubleshooting. This is Troubleshooting 101. Stay tuned. Yo, what's going on YouTube? This is Zach with IT Career Questions. And one of the questions that I always get is, Zach, how do you troubleshoot things? Like, what is the process that you go through when you have to troubleshoot an issue? So today, I brought a laptop so that we could talk about just a few of the things that you might run across when you have to troubleshoot one of your users' laptops. So as you guys can kind of see here, this is just a regular old HP laptop. It's an Envy. It's nothing special, but this could be one of your users' laptops, and they come to you and they say, Zach, I can't connect to the internet. You take it and you're like, all right, well, what are the first few things that you would check? So initially, I know if a user brings me a laptop, there are two things that I always check before I go into anything further. The first thing I always check is the wireless switch. Does this laptop have a wireless switch? So I'll look around it and see if there's a wireless switch anywhere. Most of the times you'll find wireless switches on the side somewhere. Sometimes it could be on the front. It'd just be like a little switch. It'll have like a little wireless icon and sometimes they get turned off. This one doesn't have one. So the next thing that I would look for is on the keyboard. A lot of times on laptops, they will have a wireless key. And here it is right here. It's lit up in blue. I think this camera here is hitting this one. So what you would do is you would do um, function and then uh, it's F12. I, my fingers aren't big enough, or my hand's not big enough to do it. So if I do function F12, this would turn off the wireless or turn on the wireless. You don't know how many times um, this seems to happen where users somehow accidentally hit that key combination and their wireless turns off. So between those two things, a lot of times that is primarily what happens. They may disable their wireless card somehow within their laptop settings. That happens very often too. What I'm getting at here is sometimes you don't have to dive deep into trying to figure out the most complicated issue that could be a really simple issue to fix. Like you, I don't have to go into the command prompt or the terminal and start figuring out what IP they have, um, if they're getting the right IP, if they're able to ping out to the internet, I don't have to do a trace route. I don't have to do any of those things. I check the two primary things that 90% of the time, those are the issues that a user would have. Now you may not know that because maybe you haven't got into the field, maybe you're just getting into the field and you've only got a year or two in, so you haven't run across this many times before yet, but you will. So that's one thing right there. Otherwise, if you run across that issue, you can go into a terminal or into the command prompt, depending on what operating system it is. We're on a Linux machine right now with this laptop, and if you just do an if config and hit enter, so this is gonna bring back your ethernet, IP address, and it will also bring back your wireless IP address. Under here, it's gonna be listed as uh, ETH0 and WLAN0. So right here, I'm connected with the wireless. I see I'm getting the right IP address, 192.168.1.12. Perfect, I know that that's right. Now, if you're in an organization, a lot of times you'll see that their IP scheme starts off with like a 10, it's 10.10.12.14, whatever the case may be. A lot of times you see it starts with a 10. It could also start out with 192, really depends on how your network administrator sets up their network. Really not typical to see 192 in, in a business organization, but it could happen. What you're looking to see is, does this IP address fall in range with what DHCP is supposed to be giving this, you know, this uh, device? If it doesn't, then maybe you need to, you know, uh, do like an IP config renew. That would be more so on a Windows machine. Uh, maybe you just need to recycle that IP address and uh, flush the DNS, things like that. Those are some of the other steps that you could take in order to see if this is going to fix your internet connection issue. So with Linux or Windows, those are some of the things that you can kind of do to remedy an internet connection issue. This is some of the troubleshooting 101 steps that you can go, go about doing. It doesn't really take a rocket scientist to go in and do some of these things, but you don't by any means have to really start diving deep and trying to really figure out, you know, is this, is the wireless card bad? And is, uh, is, it, is it the switch that's the problem? It's gotta be the internet that's the problem, right? It's always the internet that's the problem. That's what you'll always hear, the internet's down. The internet's down. Well, typically the, typically the internet isn't down. Typically there's an issue with the laptop or a device. 
So always make sure that you check some of the basic stuff before you start getting into more of the complex things and make sure before you talk to anybody who's more senior than you. So make sure before you go and talk to your network administrator that you have done some of the most basic troubleshooting steps with that device before you say, hey man, I cannot get this laptop to connect to the internet. And then they take this laptop and they flip the wireless switch on and then you look like an idiot. We don't want that. Basic troubleshooting 101, sometimes you have to start with the bare bones basics. And this can be said with some of the most complex technologies that you will deal with. You may think that just because you're dealing with a really complex system, server setup, whatever that case may be, where you think it's just super complex, nobody understand it, understands it or whatever, that you have to think of the most complex ways to troubleshoot those issues, that's not always the case. Sometimes you have to take a few steps back and troubleshoot at a basic level to determine what the issue could be. A lot of times, rebooting will always fix an issue. So this is Troubleshooting 101, the first video. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this video out of the series. I, I know I didn't go too far into detail with some of the things that you could do within the terminal or in the command prompt, but those are a little bit more uh, advanced things that you could look into to troubleshoot some of your wireless issues. Right now, I really wanna cover some of the basic troubleshooting steps that you can take. So I hope this video helps you guys and stay tuned for more because I'd love to do more videos just like this. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, hit me up in the comments below. As always, take it easy.